congratulations you finally did it. you finally started that channel that you've been thinking about starting for so long or maybe you haven't started quite yet maybe you are just doing the planning right now you're getting prepared and you want to know what you should do after starting Either way, this is the video for you. This is the video where we're finally going to talk about several very important things you need to do after starting your channel. I've made a lot of videos about how to start and how to grow, but never talked about these small but important things that you do after starting. So that's what we're covering today. The very first thing is to prioritize consistency. Okay, I don't want you to get overwhelmed or lost in all of the other things that I mentioned in this video. The most important thing is that you are making a video every week. The reason this is important is not so much because the algorithm loves consistency. In fact, honestly, the algorithm doesn't care. There are lots of channels that are incredibly successful that only post videos a few times a year. Why this is important is because you have a lot to learn as a creator. At least I'm guessing so. Most people do not come out of the womb knowing how to make brilliant YouTube videos and connect with their audience and grow on the platform. So there's probably a few things to learn. I know I had so many things to learn about how to make awesome videos, about what topics to choose, about how to edit my videos. There are just so much. So making a video every week will make sure that you're getting the practice that you need to make the best better videos that you need to make in order to grow here on YouTube. The next thing is the hardest thing for most people, but please do this. Tell me in the comments if you're going to do this. It is to tell everyone you know about your new channel. As soon as you've posted your first few videos, I want you to go out there and tell people because I want you to get over the 100 subscriber hump as quickly as possible. It can be so discouraging to be stuck at 12 subscribers for months. I do not want that to happen to you. The fastest way to get your channel to grow to 100,000 subscribers or more is to get your first 100 subscribers as quickly as possible. So again, so you can get over that hump. If you wanna learn more about how to get that first 100 subscribers and how to go on to get your first thousand subscribers in as little as three months, then check the description below for a link to a free workshop that I created that will teach you exactly that. You can sign up for the free workshop. We do showings of the workshop a few times every week, and I know that you're going to find it really valuable. So make sure you check down below because it definitely won't be available forever, at least not for free. So I'm going to follow that difficult thing to do with something that's pretty easy to do, but still makes a big difference. And that is write down every new video idea you have. So I know sometimes you have video ideas and you think they're not that great. So you don't write them down or you think you'll remember them later. But first of all, it's really hard to remember video ideas or anything when it's time to do it. Okay. When I'm like, quick, tell me, what did you eat for dinner last night? Or quick list your three favorite movies. That can be hard to think of. You're like, I don't know what movies I've ever watched. I don't know what books I've ever read. What did I eat for dinner? Okay. So when you are sitting down to film a YouTube video, there's a little bit of stress hormone that's going on and just the pressure of, I need to come up with a video idea can make it so you can't think of anything. So you need to have a running list and you want to filter your list later. So don't filter when you come up with the idea because then you'll always be second guessing yourself and judging your ideas and won't write very many of them down. You want to give yourself permission to be creative and to generate these ideas. So just write down every single idea so that you can move on to the next idea and come up with more and more ideas. It's kind of one of those snowball things where the more ideas you come up with, the more ideas you will come up with. Once your channel is up and running and you're consistently posting videos and having plenty of video ideas, then you can diversify a little bit. Specifically, I want you to diversify how you're interacting with your audience. You do not want to leave all of your eggs in the basket of YouTube. As much as I love YouTube, I still don't want you to have the risk of having everything that you're building in one place because something could happen to your channel. Your channel could get hacked, your subscribers could get deleted, the algorithm might stop favoring you, all sorts of things could happen. You need to have another way to interact with your audience. So a few things I'd recommend you do. First of all, create a website. I know you might not want to do that. It sounds like a huge project. Fortunately, there are some tools that make it really simple these days. 
like Squarespace. Now, I know you've probably heard everyone talking about Squarespace. They sponsor a lot of videos, but I think that there's a good reason that so many people are willing to sponsor them because they really do have a great product. I've personally used it to create websites and just loved how easy it was. Anyway, this doesn't need to be a Squarespace ad. The point is make a website, whatever tool you choose to use to do it. And the reason is because you need to have a place where some other content can live and where your YouTube subscribers can go to find out more about you. And if you have a business where they can purchase your products or sign up to work with you, however you want to take your subscribers to the next level, maybe you just want to give them more information. Maybe you want to list some of your favorite products. The website is the best place to be a hub for all of that. So create your website. And then I'd also recommend that you set up some sort of email marketing software. Now, again, you might be like, I just wanted to be a YouTuber. I don't want to be a marketer. Okay. But you need to have a way to talk to your subscribers, especially if maybe something goes awry with YouTube and you're not able to talk to them via YouTube. So I want you to set up some sort of email marketing software. You could use something like MailerLite or ConvertKit or ActiveCampaign or MailChimp and you're going to integrate that with your website and that way you can send emails to all of your subscribers to tell them when you post new videos or anything else that you want to share with them. It's going to make your brand and your business so much more secure and stable so that you can build it sustainably over time and you aren't running the risk of wasting all this time and money building your channel only to potentially lose it. Another way you can diversify your audience is by adding additional social media platforms. So for example, maybe you start building your audience on Instagram or LinkedIn or TikTok as well. Now that can be a good move, but I always recommend that you focus most of your energy and attention on one core content platform. That doesn't mean you can't have an Instagram account and you can't interact with your subscribers there. It just means I wouldn't really recommend trying to create amazing Instagram content to grow and also trying to create amazing YouTube content to grow there. So if you do decide to use a secondary platform, just make sure that it fits in well and you understand how the two things are related. So it's not just you're trying to build YouTube and Instagram, but instead you're trying to build YouTube and then you're using Instagram for support so that you can have that interaction with your subscribers. Next up is finances. Now, this is something you definitely don't want to avoid, but it's also not something that needs to be very complicated or take very much energy. There are just two financial moves I want you to make when you're first starting your channel. First thing, open a business bank account or at least a separate bank account. Now, in most places, in order to open a business bank account, you have to register your business and get a tax ID number. And that's more hassle than you need to go through since you're probably just doing business as yourself as an individual. And so you don't have to register as a business in most areas. Now, of course, I'm not an accountant. I'm not a business attorney. So you might wanna check with one of those about your specific situation. But I can tell you that most of the time, if you're doing business just as yourself, you don't have to register. And so you might not be able to open an actual business bank account. However, what you can do is just open a separate personal bank account and use it for your business money. And that will accomplish 99% of what you need to accomplish with a business bank account, which is just keeping your money completely separate from your personal money. It's going to keep everything much more organized. It will make it easier to do your taxes. It will make it easier to prove later on what money was spent on the business so that you can deduct things from your taxes. So do yourself a favor and open a second bank account for your YouTube channel slash business. The other financial move is also pretty simple. In fact, probably even more so you want to set up some sort of simple bookkeeping system. This definitely doesn't need to be complicated. In fact, for most people, especially when they're first starting out, a spreadsheet will do the job just fine. All you're trying to track is what you spend money on for your YouTube channel and what money your YouTube channel earns. So you can literally have just one spreadsheet where you list the date and description and then the credit and the debit that is happening with your bank account. If you don't want to go the spreadsheet route, maybe that feels a little bit too manual and a little bit too much of a hassle. You could choose a bookkeeping software instead. A good option is wave app because their plan is completely free. They 
They also offer some paid services for payroll and payment processing, but their basic business accounting software is completely free. So now you've covered all of your basics, your channel is up and running and you are ready to really start growing it. So a couple growth strategies I'd recommend that you start with. First of all, collaborate with other channels and with other types of media. So both channels on YouTube, but also podcasts or blogs, things like that. The reason is because if you are trying to just grow your channel all by yourself, you're just waiting for the algorithm to eventually take notice of you, that can take a long time. It, and it's a little bit of a gamble. Now, it always works eventually, but if we're trying to accelerate this growth, then we need to get your channel in front of more people more quickly. And so by collaborating with another channel, you can get exposure to all of that channel's subscribers. And similarly, if you get featured on a podcast or a blog, you get exposure to all of their audience. And that can really take your channel and your audience growth up a notch to where you're not just getting one new subscriber, one new subscriber, but it's the steady slow growth and then suddenly up a notch and then you keep growing from there. It can really accelerate things a whole lot. So what you need to do is you need to search for your video ideas on YouTube and find other small channels that are also making videos about those topics. Now, ideally you're going to find a channel that is making videos for the same audience, but is a slightly different topic. However, it's also fine if they make videos about exactly the same topic. Then what you can do is you can go to that channel's about page and you can find their email address and you can send them an email asking if they would be interested in collaborating. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised to find how interested other small YouTubers are in collaborating so that you can both grow your audiences. Another great small channel growth strategy is to use surveys. So you want to survey your audience. And if you don't have an audience yet, you can literally just survey your friends, survey them about different thumbnails you're considering using. So just show them two different thumbnail options and ask them, which of these do you like better? And also about what titles you're considering using for your videos. Now, there are two reasons for this. One reason is just to get people more involved with your channel. It's a great way to get the word out without being too spammy or promotional. But the other reason is because the feedback for you can be incredibly valuable. A lot of the time when we design things or we come up with a title, we're just a bit too close to it and it makes sense to us. So we think it will make sense to other people. Getting that feedback from other people about which thumbnail or title they prefer is an incredibly valuable insight that can cause your video to perform a whole lot better than it would otherwise. Honestly, I could talk all day about how to grow your channel. That's not the main focus of this video and there's a few more things I need to cover. So I'm just gonna link to a video up there all about how to grow when your channel is small, some strategies that are really working this year. So make sure you check that out. And also, like I said, there's that workshop down below that you can sign up for for free, all about how to get your first thousand subscribers and get monetized in the next three months. Okay, so the last thing we need to talk about today is money, because I'm guessing that you would like to earn a living from your channel or at least have a bit of side income. And the reason I'm guessing that is because I work with a lot of people who are starting YouTube channels and working on growing their channels. And that is the number one goal that I hear is that people want to earn some income from their YouTube channels. Now, obviously, once you do get your first thousand subscribers and get monetized, you'll be able to start earning money from AdSense here on YouTube. And that is an awesome benefit of making YouTube videos. And I love that I get paid to do something that I would very happily do for free, but you might not want to wait until you get to a thousand subscribers because there are ways you can start making money sooner. And also when you do eventually start making money from AdSense, it won't be very much at first and it's better to have more diverse streams of income so that you can be earning more money and your income can be more stable, which is very key if you want to be self-employed and you don't have 
one big paycheck coming in every month. In fact, really, even if you are not self-employed, even if you're working a day job, it's better to have your income diversified because you'll be more financially stable. There are two main income strategies I wanna talk about today. The first one is affiliate marketing. Here's how this works. Most companies have affiliate programs. You can sign up for these affiliate programs and then you'll get a special link for their products. And if you send someone to their product and the person purchases their product, then you'll get a commission. So it's kind of like your commission salesperson. Now, sometimes this can get a really bad rap because some people are really sleazy salespeople and they're sleazy about this. But if you do it right and you only recommend products that you actually use and love products that you would recommend anyway, then it's a win-win situation where you can get a kickback from helping your audience by giving them a product recommendation. That's personally the way I use it in my business. And I love that I can get paid, make some money doing something that I would happily do anyway. So in thinking about things to do after starting your channel, your action item is sign up for some affiliate programs. The easiest one that you'll probably want to start with is just the Amazon affiliate program. It's super easy to sign up for. There are no minimum thresholds or anything you need to meet. Anyone can sign up for it. And then you'll have links for every product on Amazon that you can share with your audience. However, there are many other affiliate programs as well. So I'd highly recommend looking into the affiliate programs of different products that you use and enjoy and might be interested in recommending to your audience. Once you sign up for affiliate programs, then you will want to go around and collect the affiliate links for the specific products. And I'd recommend just popping them into a spreadsheet for easy reference for you. So you can grab them whenever you want to share that product. And then whenever you mention that product in a video, you'll just add those links into your description along, of course, with an explanation of what the link is for. The other way I recommend you start working on diversifying your income is a bit more involved, but it has lasting benefits and really may become your main focus for your brand and business long term. And that is to start developing your own products. Maybe this is at the forefront of your mind already, and that has been your intention for your YouTube channel all along, or maybe it's something you haven't even considered doing. But I highly recommend at least considering it, starting to think about it, because while you certainly can earn money from AdSense and from affiliate marketing, you're only going to be earning a percentage, a small percentage of the total amount of money that people are handing to YouTube or handing to these other companies. But if you sell your own product, then you can earn a much larger percentage of that revenue. Okay, that got really nerdy really fast, but basically you can make more money selling your own products than promoting other people's stuff. That's what I really meant by that. So in thinking about your own products, there are so many options here. First of all, maybe there's a service you could offer. Is there something that maybe you do for work that you could offer to freelance clients? Or maybe you have some other skill or something that you could teach people. Those are all potential services that you could offer on your website. Also, you could sell some sort of digital informational product. You could create a course, you could write a book, or you could teach live workshops. Those are all very valid options. And what I love about those options, they are personally my favorite, is that they do create passive income. You create the product and then because it is a digital product, you don't have to ship it out to your customers physically. It can automatically be delivered to them digitally. So once you've created the product, then you can promote it using your YouTube videos and using email. People will go and purchase it and you will make money just from creating your content. And so if you want to be a content creator, if that's what you're you're most excited about, that could be a really good option for you. And then finally, you could also consider creating physical products. So maybe you have something you want to handcraft and sell on your website or on Etsy, or maybe you want to sell a physical product that someone else manufactures and you're simply selling the product. I mean, that's how all of retail works. That's how Target makes all of their money is they're just purchasing products wholesale and then selling them retail. And your business, your new business that your YouTube channel is launching can do that if you like. All right, well, that brings us to the end of this. I know that was a lot of information. There are a lot of smart moves you can make after starting your channel. We didn't even cover quite all of them, but I know that this will give you a lot to work on. 
like I said, I put all these things together into a PDF checklist that you can download if you would find that helpful. There's a link to that down below as well. And also, since you're here, I'm guessing that you are working on growing your YouTube channel. So make sure you check out that workshop I was talking about as well. Thanks for joining me again this week for this video. I hope you found it helpful. I'm curious to know what else you want to know about how to grow on YouTube, how to turn your YouTube channel into a business. If you have any questions about those things, just ask in the comments. I'm always looking for your guys' questions for new video ideas. And I love making videos that I know will be helpful because it's answering a specific question that you asked. So thank you so much again. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. And of course, consider subscribing if you haven't already for new videos about about YouTube strategy and online business strategy every week. That's all for now, but I'll see you guys next week. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like to let me know and to help it out in the YouTube algorithm. And of course, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for new videos like this every single week. I'll be back again here and I'd love to have you here. Until then, take care and I hope you're having an amazing week.